One more time, baby. I don't know. I don't know what that was. I don't know what Fritz is. Who's Betty? I don't know who's Betty. I thought it was Yummies with Mildred. Yeah, Mildred. Oh, Fritz, he's just... I'm going insane. Is that? Well, Fritzy's women, that's... No. All right. How you doing, folks? Leighton Schmull here. Coming to you with what is this, what is this from FEMA Region 3? Oh, man, time is flying so fast. I, I, I don't even know where to start. By the time I get done, put the video up, it'll be eight more thousand breaking news stories. We won't know what to do. Oh. It's like uh, Daniel. Daniel, in the book of Daniel, seal it up, like he said, seal up the book till the time of the end, when knowledge will increase and many will run to and fro. Well, we're there. We're right there, smack that right in the middle of that. Oh. I don't know how long this video is going to be. I don't, you know, because, like I said, you know... I, there's so much information we got to talk about. But I do want to uh, uh, talk, touch on a couple of things quickly. And then maybe I'll just cut it off right there. I don't know. Got to have some radish. I ain't had no ribs for a while. I got to, you know, to maybe treat myself to some ribs. I got some good Chinese food waiting downstairs. Got some Mongolian beef. Ooh. Mongolian beef. Ooh, 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 ooh. How'd you like that one, Fritzy? Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> All right. Back in um, January of this year, this past January course, is the which I speak. I did a video, and I mentioned for you all to keep an eye on something. And then I saw a headline recently, and I thought, oh, Elohim. Ooh, 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 ooh. He knows what he's doing. Understatement of all understatements, of course. Mm. Watch this. There's one country I want you to keep an eye on. No, it's not, not Russia, and it's not Syria. I want you to watch out. A good old Turkey. Turkey. A lot of Bible prophecy experts were puzzled by Turkey because they were allies with, with Israel for many, many years, but things are changing. I want you to Google that. I want you to be a Berean. Search the scriptures. Look at particularly in Yezkeel or Ezekiel 38-39, Gog Magog. Turkey figures very prominently there in the, that very important period of history. But like I was saying, Turkey, Turkey was an ally of Israel for many years, but things have changed. So watch out for Turkey. All right. Did you get that? Did you hear that? Well, actually, I, I, I do have to crack myself. Whoops, whoops, what do I do? Um, that, um, that video, that clip, was made back on February the 1st. It was from a video I did called The Football in the Flood. You can go back and take a look at that if you like. Um, but I found it very interesting that uh, Elohim had put it on my heart about the Turkey. And, um, you know, all those other countries, you know, they're surrounding Israel, close to Israel, you know, they're ready to wipe it out. Psalm 83. There is, the Turkey is not mentioned in Psalm 83, but of course it is It is mentioned in uh, Ezekiel 38 and 39. Gag magag, gag magag, gag magag, go gag magag. Oh, Fritzies, I'm not going to take off on that one sooner or later. Okay. But for many years, Turkey had uh, pretty, pretty good relations with... Um, <laughs> um, with Israel. Turkey and Israel got along, you know. Uh, but uh, so, you know, 
property folks, prophecy folks, was puzzled by how, you know, Turkey was going to start, you know, uh, you know, um, dishonoring uh, uh, their their friend Israel. Um, so we didn't know what was going to happen. But it, uh, Elohim put it on my heart for us all to, to keep an eye on Turkey. And uh, just the other day, I think I found out why. Because I saw this headline. Look at that, folks. Check it out. Oh, my goodness. Look at that headline. The Muslim Brotherhood declares Turkey is the capital of the Islamic Caliphate. Prophecy is being fulfilled. There you go, my friends. I tell you, keep your, keep your eyes on Turkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Valid Shubat, very prominent man. He was once a PLO terrorist. Now he's a born-again Christian evangelist for our Elohim and his Ben Yeshua Hamashiach, a terrorist, Valid Shubat. And his sources are very credible. And he is telling us right now, the Muslim Brotherhood declares Turkey is the capital of the Islamic Caliphate. Look down here what it says. This is from Valid Shubat. Listen up, folks. The most prominent spiritual leader of the Muslim Brotherhood is none other than Sheikh Yusuf al Karadawi, And this Sunday, he declared that Turkey is where the caliphate will be established. My goodness gracious me. <laughs> Let's take a look a little further down. Let's see. Look at some of these here. And I guess that's that. Uh, now, th I'm not going to play this video because it's in um, it's in Arabic. You couldn't understand them anyway. All right. Um, look what some of these quotes say here. Let's see. Go down just a little further. Make sure we get it. Um, in an interview with TV Turkia, Turkia, I don't know how you pronounce that, Karadawi declared... We came to Turkey to assess the Fourth Assembly of the Union of Muslim Scholars in Istanbul, capital of the Islamic Caliphate. And then it says again, he added, Turkey is the Caliphate state, and Istanbul is its capital. Turkey unites religion and the world, Arab Wahhabist Sunnis and Persian Shiites, Asia and Africa, and it, the caliphate, should be based upon this nation. Turkey! <laughs> there you go, my friends. Check that out. Now, here's another one. I thought that was, I thought that was good. But where do you see this one? Look at this. Watch this, folks. Watch this. Let's see here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. $100 million mega mosque coming to this state. What state would that be? What state would that be? Let's take a look. Oh, my. Turkey's Islamist government is constructing a massive $100 million. Turkey's government is <laughs> a massive $100 million. 15-acre mosque in Lanham, Maryland, that is expected to be the to become the largest and most striking example of Islamic architecture in the Western Hem Hemisphere by October the 14th. They are building the largest Islamic mosque in the Western Hemisphere. In FEMA Region 3! Ha <laughs> ha! What do you think of that, my friends? Let's read this. In May... Let's see. In May, Turkey Prime Minister Tayyip Erdogan placed a ceremonial stone at the construction site. Man, oh man. Now the five-building project known as the Turkish American Culture and Civilization Center, 
built by the Turkish government, right? You know, very, very close to, to Washington, D.C. My goodness gracious, FEMA Region 3. Uh, is well underway in the town just outside Washington, D.C. with a population of about 10,000. And this, of course, I mean, this was... When did this story come out? This story came out last year. August the 6th, 2013. 2013. We didn't know anything about it here in FEMA Region 3. I just did this, just, just saw this not too long ago. So, did I say to keep an eye on Turkey? The Muslim Brotherhood announces, according to Valid Shubat, very credible, very, very credible man, that the caliphate will be based in Turkey, with its capital in Istanbul, and a $100 million mega mosque. So what do you think of that? All you watchmen, watch ladies, watch children, and all their watch dogs out there, Turkey, Turkey, I said it back in uh, February, watch it, watch Turkey, be a Berean, search it out, and there's that story, from 2013, almost to the day, August 6th, and here it is, what, oh, yeah, the end of August, but still, a year later, we're finding out, or at least, you know, most, many of us are, I didn't even, I didn't hear it, and on, you know, any of the, 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 the programs, you know, nothing on television, of course, that idiot box ain't gonna say nothing, and, uh, Secretary of State wither up piece of chaff, not, he ain't gonna say nothing about it, or, uh, President Voss's name, that the government of Turkey is allowed to, be, the government of Turkey, not even, you know, American Muslims, the government of Turkey, and Erdogan himself comes here and lays the cornerstone right here in FEMA Region 3. The largest mosque in what? The Western Hemisphere. <laughs> just, just miles from the capital of the United States of America. Oh, George. George the Washington. What, you, what would you say? What would you say today? Oh. <laughs> the only good president we ever had, you know, was George. One of these days I'm going to do a whole video on George. It, my uh, secular hero, that man is. No doubt about it. Man, oh man. Much to talk about with George. But, you know, there you go. Turkey. The tide is turning. And uh, they are not friendly anymore with the land of Elohim. No. And you definitely got to take Valid Shubat at his word. For sure. No doubt about that. You can Google Valid Shubat. He's all over the place. Many, many other watch people, you know, quote him, talk about him. All right, uh, moving on. Getting on, bit it. I want to talk a little bit about uh, uh, the next uh, several years. Um, I mentioned before in another video about 2015. The climate chaos coming up at the end of 2015. And then, of course, you know, you got the uh, the uh, UN's uh, Millennial Development Goals. They even got a little countdown uh, clock here. Uh, let me pull that up here. Look at that. There, there you go. Tick, 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 tick. Woohoo! Tick it, tick it. And then, um, gonna jump over, gonna skip over 
2016. I can't even imagine being in 2015. I don't think, uh, you know, oh, well, we keep your fingers crossed, my friends. Smack that out of here in a twinkling of an eye. Gonna skip over 2016 and we're gonna mention uh, the year after that. There was something that, that changed my whole perspective. My whole perspective on everything I, I, I believed with that had to do with Bible prophecy. Then I, uh, and this, this is the most amazing sign in the Shamaim. Talked about it before. It's what uh, uh, led me to download Stellarium. I went on to the uh, to the YouTube channel of a Mr. Scott Clark, <laughs> and I learned about this. And a great sign was seen in the Shamaim. A woman clad with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. And being pregnant, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And there is the king planet, Jupiter. If you turn off the constellation Art, you see that Jupiter is in the birth canal of the woman, Virgo, that represents both Mary, Miriam, and Israel. My goodness gracious folks, I said before that this changed my whole perspective on what I believed uh, uh, about Bible prophecy. No, no, I, I, must, I must change that. What I meant to say was it assured me of everything that I believe. Everything that I know without a doubt is going to happen. It is the most amazing sign that I have ever seen in my life, my friends. It is to the letter. I mean, it is right down. It is so specific. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon at her feet, a crown of 12 stars. Vaughn, there are nine stars in the constellation of Leo, the lion of the tribe of Judah, nine stars, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Regulus makes nine, and then the three wandering stars, nine, ten, Venus, eleven, Mars, 12, Mercury, a crown of 12 stars on her head. The only place in history that, that the 12 stars occurs. There are other times when the moon is at her feet and that the woman is closed with the sun. But this is the kicker right here, the 12 stars above her head. That alignment of Venus, Mars, and Mercury here we go. Doesn't happen except for here. On September the 23rd, 2017. 2017, my friends. Google it. Google it with regards to Bible prophecy or, or thing, upcoming things there. It'll blow your mind. There was a story, Brian Williams, NBC, talking about having the... Uh, the microchip, everyone being implanted with a micro, microchip by 2017. And then I saw something recently, my friends, that just... <laughs> there was a story not too long ago about uh, Jorge, the false prophet. 
in which, uh, and this just is very sad, you know, uh, three of his family members were killed recently in a, in a car accident. And they spoke to him. And uh, look at this headline, my friends. Look at what this says. Can you believe that? Jorge, the false prophet, is surmising that he could possibly die by when? 2017. My goodness gracious, my friends, this is just, this is mind-boggling. 2017. That's the year. That's put, that you see right in front of you, right there. And this, and this is happening when? Oh. There we go. 2017. It's too much. I remember years ago, uh, my little friend, uh, my little Polish friend, Shaul, uh, he told me this story where he was talking to his friend, hey, where are you at, hey, how are you doing, hey, where are you, hey? Um, he was talking to his friend, Herb. It was not long after Shaul had gotten saved. And Herb had asked him about uh, something about, you know, when he thought many of these things were going to come to pass. And for some reason, uh, Shaul told me he didn't know why, but he blurted it out. 2017. 2017 is, is the year. And this was back in 1989. So all those years before, 2017 just pops out. Just happens to be when this sign takes place. I'm sure little Shaul just, you know, <laughs> he was taken quite aback when he... Uh, when he, when he saw this. I'm sure he's watched Scotty's videos many times. But there it is, 2017. And then Jorge the False Prophet is possibly, you know, telling people that he's going to die in 2017. Too much. And you don't take that lightly. You don't take anything to fall, anything lightly that the False Prophet says. This guy, <laughs> you know. Hmm. 2017. Gotta tell you, friends, that blew my mind. 2017 is gonna be one heck of a year, my friends. Mark my words. I don't think we're gonna be here. I think Elohim is going to send his bane, our bridegroom, to come and get us, take us to the marriage supper of the Lamb before 2017. Now, I want to look at uh, something else that really, you know, just kind of... Well, it kind of gave me chills when I uh, when I did this research and just... I don't know. I don't, you just don't know what Elohim's going to lead you to do. And, you, you know, for some reason, I wanted to go back and take a look at Jupiter. Jupiter, when it was in between the twins... Of the constellation Gemini. I did a video that uh, had a lot to do with the um, with the first blood moon of uh, April the fifteenth, and uh, there at the same time as that, uh, Jupiter was right betwixt the twins, and Mars was in the womb of Virgo. War in the womb. What happened? What happened not long after that? Let's see. It was April the 15th, the first blood moon. April, May, June, July. Three months. Three months. On July the 8th, the first rockets were shot by Hamas into Israel. And it's still going on right now. So the first blood moon showed up in April with Mars, which represents war, in the womb of Virgo, which represents both uh, Israel 
and Miriam who birthed Yeshua. Israel, of course, also birthed Yeshua. And there's Jupiter that represents Yeshua, the king planet, right there. Twix the twins, Jacob and Esau. Esau, of course, being the uh, patriarch of the Palestinian people. Edom, which means red. <laughs> and, of course, you know, Mars and the red planet, you know, war in the womb. That just blew me away. And I just kept thinking about, I was watching how Jupiter was during between um, between uh, August 2013 and May of 2015 when it left, I'm sorry, 2014, when it left Gemini. It was doing retrograde, retrograde motion. It was going back and forth uh, between the twins and this star right here. Maybe go a little bit past it, then it would go a little bit past the middle, but it would either, and then it would go back to the middle, then it would go back to this star called Wasat, which in Arabic, many of the stars are named in Arabic, uh, means middle, where Jupiter was doing this thing in the middle, and then back to the star, then back to the middle. And the star, Wasat, means middle. <laughs> oh, Elohim. And, um... The first time that it conjoined with Vasat, when Jupiter first conjoined with Vasat, was... All right, we're going to watch. Watch it. Watch where it goes. Watch. And I'll move it back. Watch it here. I'm going to move it over a little more. Okay, here we go. Was... October the 3rd. Let's move in a little bit. You can see it's conjoined. With the star Vasat, Jupiter and Vasat conjoined on October the 3rd and the 4th. So you can see right there, smack that right on top of that star, Jupiter on top of Vasat. Two events happened on that day. And I'll tell you what they are in a second. But I looked up what... Uh, what the astronomers had to say about uh, Wasat. Read that. It's taught, it's it's saying how you know it is very much it is it is Saturn like, and it uh, it can mean uh, you know many negative things. Look at that. Read it right there. It's right there. My goodness gracious. So, you got this star that is uh, compared uh, or has Saturn-like uh, qualities. Saturn, of course, represents Satan. Is the planet that represents uh, Satan or Satan. And on October the 3rd and the 4th, when Jupiter conjoins with Vasat, the two events that happened, the one on October 3rd, was the woman who ran her car into a pylon or something outside of the White House and they killed her. To this day, we still don't know the whole story of that. And then on October the 4th, a man... The, that's the day that the man set himself on fire on the National Mall in Washington, D.C. So, the first time in 2013, before the blood moon, that Jupiter conjoins with Wasat, the woman is shot and killed for ramming her car mysteriously into the White House, they, they just killed her, didn't ask any questions. And then the next day, on the 4th of October, 2013, a man sets himself on fire, which is very symbolic of change and chaos. So there we go. So I started to uh, delve a little more into this, and I 
I went to, um, I found out that when Saturn conjoins with Wasat, uh, it can be, uh, it can be very interesting. And something very interesting did happen the last time that, uh, Saturn conjoined. There's Saturn right there. Now we're going to go backwards. We're going to go backwards here. And let me... Let's go back to the month of July. Oh, <laughs> July. Boy, oh boy. Alright. Now let's find... Uh, let's find Gemini again. Where would you go? There we are. Alright, let's find Gemini. This really blew my mind, folks. Alright, now here is July the 4th. Didn't mean to, didn't mean to land on July the 4th. Uh, and there's the sun. The sun on July the 4th is in the middle of the twins. And this, of course, will involve the star of Asat, which means middle. And Saturn, which means, which represents a Satan. Or Satan, as you would say. And see the year. So it's July the 4th, 2004. 2004 <laughs> was a big year for a certain somebody. Now the, the, uh, <coughs> our flame, the last time that Saturn passed over the star was sat was between July 20th and July 27th of 2004. Now, you see here, it's almost conjoining now. Now, we're going to just go up 20th, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th. And it's just, you know, that week was the week that Saturn... Passes over with Sat, ending up on the 27th. Now remember, and of course not in 2004, but in the year 2014, which is this year, July 27th was the day that the iPhone, a uh, Siri of the iPhone, said that that was the date that the opening of the gates of Hades. Remember July 27th. July 27th was the end of the conjunction or, you know, the passing over of Saturn. The last time it passed over, Saturn passed over with Sat, 2004. Something, um, a big event happened on July, tw uh, July the 26th and the 27th of 2004. Let's see, what could that event have been? Hmm. It was this. The 2004 Democratic National Convention, when they nominated for president the withered up Secretary of State dried up piece of chaff nut and that screwball that cheated on his wife while she had cancer. Saturn passed over with Sat. And there's, that's what happened from the July 26th to the 29th, the 2004 Democratic National Convention, when these two clowns were nominated by the Democrats. Goodness gracious. Okay. All right. Now, the convention went from July 26th to the 29th. Now let's go down a little bit because they had a special guest at that convention. A special guest and a special event. It was Barack Obama's keynote address. Barack Obama was announced to the world. When Saturn 
passes over the star of Asat. When that happens, there can be, well, there, there, it was a poison, it represented poison gas, poisonous chemicals, malevolence, destructiveness. Barack Obama is announced to the world by way of his keynote address at the Democratic National Convention on what date? July the 27th, 2004. In 2014, a decade later, that is announced as the opening of the gates of Hades, July the 27th. So Barack Obama is announced to the world on July 27th, 2004. Who had heard of him before that? Except for maybe in Chicago where he was, you know, hanging out with Bill Ayers and he was a state senator. But then all of a sudden, on July 27th, 2004, smack vap, there he is. And the world loves him. The world loves him. Not us. They don't love him. Not the bride of Christ doesn't love him. But there we are. July 27th, 2004. As Saturn, the planet that represents Satan, passes over a star that could represent poison. <laughs> July 27, 2004, Barack Obama announced to the world. There's also something else that uh, was important, very significant about July 27, 2004. You'll never guess, my friends. Look at this. July 27th of the year 2004 just happened to be The ninth of Av. My goodness, my friends. Tishba Av began at sunset Monday, July 26, 2004, and ended at nightfall Tuesday, July 27, 2004. The night that Barack Hussein Obama is announced to the world. The ninth of Av. Barack Hussein Obama is announced to the world on the most tragic day in the history of Israel. <laughs> July 27, 2004. Had anybody ever heard of him before that? Before that keynote speech? No. Not many. Not many at all, if, if, oh. Announced to the world on the most tragic day in the history of Israel. A decade later, the iPhone announces that it's the day that the gates of Hades will open. It's Sunday, July 27th, 2014, opening gates of Hades. So what, what, the? Uh, what have we learned, I hope, from this video? I, I hope I, 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 I couldn't believe it when I saw that. I don't even know what possessed me a few days ago to just sit for three hours and, and watch Jupiter go back and forth between the twins and this little star. That apparently has to do with poison and destructiveness and malevolence. And the last time... That Saturn, that uh, represents Satan, passes over that star. The last time was July 27th, 2004, when Barack Hussein Obama is announced to the world. <laughs> and then, of course, you know, uh, Turkey. Turkey, friends, friends of Israel for many years ups and uh, decides it's going to be, or according to Valid Shubat, going to be the, uh, the home base of the Islamic Caliphate. That's just announced. <laughs> and the largest 
Muslim mosque in the Western Hemisphere is to be built, or is in the process of being built, by the Turkish government, with Erdogan, the Prime Minister of Turkey, laying the cornerstone himself. Uh -oh. This this grandest, grandest example of Islamic architecture in the Western Hemisphere, just miles from the capital of the United States of America, Lanham, Maryland, purportedly to be completed by October of this year. Perhaps Barbara Mikulski, the senior senator from Maryland, perhaps she could show up to the grand opening of a mosque, wearing her burqa. All right, but let's see that's enough. All right, that's it. I... All right, come on now. Knock it off. I'm telling you, I'm never voting again. There's only one way I would vote. I don't believe there's going to be a 2016 election. Many of us do not believe that there will be. But the only way that I would possibly vote in that election, if we're still here, which I am, the only way would be if Dr. Ben Carson ran for president. I would vote for that man. I would vote for that man. That man is, 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 he loves Elohim. He loves Yeshua Hamashiach. And a far cry from that thing that we have in the White House right now. And then, and then, just out of the clear blue, Jorge, the false prophet, says he might die in 2017. 2017, the year of the most fantastically prophetic sign in, in the Shamaim, the woman clothed with the sun, with the moon at her feet, 12 stars at her head in labor. Just happens to be the year that that's the year that Jorge thinks she might kick it. <laughs> man, oh man. Well, one more thing. Uh, it just uh, kind of hit me. As I was thinking about July 27th. Remember the clip that I played of Pastor Farag? The, uh, in my last video. Where he was saying, uh, I'm losing my mind, he said. I'm going out of my mind. He was very distraught. You've seen how distraught he was. On that day. Expressing... How everything is so satanic right now. That just happened to be July the 27th. 